Rusty Spoon here, brothers and sisters, at Dan Electro's Guitar Bar. Come with me. We're about to meet a Texas blues legend. <laughs> Mr. Terry, you've played with greats, the blues greats. Uh, who has been the greatest influence on your music since you started? Um, gosh, maybe one person, like Gate Mouth Brown, um, mainly because he played different styles of roots music, but no matter what he played, it would always come out sounding like blues. So he would do Cajun stuff, do West Coast you know, jump blues, he do uh, Texas swing, you know, he do straight up blues, and uh, even dabble in country and things like that, but it will always come out like Gate Bop Brown Blues. And I think that that's kind of what I try to do is, is play different st styles of roots music and um, blend it kind of all together, and it creates, uh, but it still ends up sounding like blues. As you reflect on the past, what are the greatest changes you've seen over the decades in the blues? I, well, obviously it's the internet and cell phones, you know, I think you can market yourself online. Amplification? Uh, you can really, you know, uh, you can really market yourself online. I, you know, style. I see a lot of really great things. It's just, you know, when a lot of the old guys died, so maybe the point is, is they took the music with them. Some of that sounds, you know, will never be duplicated again. But then again, it lives on. It's, it is passed on and stuff. It's just different. So. What is it about the blues that touches us all? Um, I treat, try to treat playing a lot like playing folk music. Or I make it the folk music. In other words, it's music about people, about working people all kinds of people, something that sort of transcends over, you know, nobody's immune to blues. Everybody gets it. Little kids get it, grown-ups get it, sick people get it, healthy people get it, you know, different color people, everybody gets it. There's no, you can't take a shot for it or anything. It's going to happen if you live long enough to know. When you play, there's some kind of music, uh, some, when you play, there's some kind of magic that happens. Is there a groove you get into that you know you're there? Well, especially when I'm playing with guys that are I'm close to, you know, I can really get uh, really into a lot of syncopated patterns and stuff, and they follow me with passing chords and passing changes and stuff, and, and it makes for some really interesting music. What does it feel like when you know you've connected to your audience and they're right there with you? I don't know. I, you know, some nights you're, you're raw, man. You might have a substitute bass player or something. But something about that rawness, you know, will attract people in a, in a, in a given night sometimes. So you can be really polished and have all your act together, material together and stuff. But when it was just a little bit funky, sometimes people maybe get it more. That's what they're looking for right at that time. That must be a magic moment. It can be, you know, yeah. Well, I mean, it's always magic to play. I, uh, it, everything, every time I play, I, it's wonderful, you know. Can you show us a simple blues progression? A blues progression, you can take a, um, the first note, the fourth note, and the fifth note in the major scale, and turn those into chords. So you go one, the first note, and then you go four, fourth note and then five so that's the one four five and blues and then you go five four one for a turnaround show us how that works <laughs> Oh.
amazing. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, I know your first love is teaching young people and passing on the blues. That's how, not, does that, how does that make you feel? I, my first love is playing, performing. My first love is getting up front of people and performing. Uh, the teaching thing started out by necessity because I could make a little extra money and play while I was out trying to gig. So it really, all this kind of happened by accident. It didn't, I didn't set out to be necessarily a teacher. It, it just sort of evolved. And then in the 90s, I was president of Houston Blues Society and I worked with the um, University of Houston professor of sociology on putting a, on a blues in schools program. So he got grants and we started going to schools like Yates High and we'd bring in Big Walter or Texas Johnny Brown, or Joe Guitar Hughes, or, or Milton Hopkins, or people like that. Uh, and I would go in, and we'd do demonstrations and teach people how to play. Uh, or, you know, and we'd lecture about it. We wouldn't necessarily teach anybody how to play. We'd lecture. Um, the teaching just started evolving more and more. And, uh, and then, three years ago, I wanted to put together a workshop, so I decided to start this Texas Harmonica Festival uh, little franchise so this is my third year so we have workshops in the day we teach people how to play and I bring in guys from all over the country in the state you know I try to make it a one national artist and then um, some regional guys and some local guys you know I try to make it a pretty full full day well it's and been a beautiful thing so far it's real nice uh, I'm real you know it's always turns out well so that the city supports it um, you know, and there's always different avenues you kind of learn as you go along on how to market it better and stuff, and it kind of grows a little bit, you know. So I, but I teach at uh, also at uh, community colleges, and I had a, I've had uh, I teach at a private school here in town. I teach folk guitar and harmonica at a uh, Houston Outdoor Learning Academy. So I've residency there in the last, last two years. Tell me a little bit about what you did in the third ward yesterday. That was amazing. Now we did a blues in the schools over there that was sponsored by the Houston Blues Society. And I have an artist and they work with the Texas Harmonica Fest to sponsor one of the road guys, you know, to support one of the road guys that put together blues in the schools. And so Honer Harmonicas gave us twenty harmonicas and RJ Nisho, the headliner for the Texas Harmonica Fest, came in and he he uh, um, did a did a uh, you know, showed kids how to play harmonica, and I helped. You know, we worked together on it. But I kind of stayed out in the audience, and he stayed up and played. And then uh, Texas Johnny Brown, blues legend, major, you know, 84 years old, and and sharp as attack. You know, and Milt Hopkins, same way. You know, these guys played with BB King, the Amos Mulborn, and you know, they're stars. You know, around town in their own right. So they played the blues in schools, um, and it was at Project Row Houses, which is a fabulous. Uh, community nonprofit over in Houston Third Ward, and uh, we had about what, 15 kids showed up. It was nice. It was really, really nice. And when these young people connect to the blues, can you see it in their eyes? Um, you know, some you do. Some, I mean, kids are just all different. You know, that some of them are just for fun, but someday it'll make more sense to a lot of them. You know, and we introduced them to something pretty special. They're very honest, very real. And, and Johnny Brown is, and Mel Hopkins, that's two very distinguished guys. The kids knew how to behave around them, you know. <laughs> Johnny Brown, he goes, Terry, I got grandkids all over the place, man. You know, this is nothing to me. <laughs> and how did, the, how did the kids with their donated harmonicas react? They were all doing real good. Some of them were back there humming the blues. They go, oh, da, 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 da. you know. So we had taught them uh, how to play shuffles and and how to play rhythm and how to play da 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 da. You know, the little I'm a man thing. You know, so it was cute. It was fun. So they connected. Oh yeah, it was a, the, one of the best blues in schools I've ever done. Outstanding. Yeah, in a perfect location. Just a great, good luck, great job. Now, give you, Blue Society all the credit for that because they, 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 they backed it. They underwrote 
you know. The Houston Blue Society has done great work. Tell us a little bit about that. You founded it, did you not? Yeah, I ran it for three and a half years at the beginning and, and was president for three years. And uh, and then I decided I really liked playing more, you know, so I just uh, gave that up. But I work with them on a few other projects and stuff. They're, they're, they got a really great group of people. Really great. They do so many nice things for people. They'll kill you with kindness. They're really great. So I know your first love is playing the blues, but I know you teach and get a great deal of joy out of that. Tell me about that. Tell me about your experience with teaching. Um, I teach adults. I teach grandparents. I teach people that got it on their bucket list. I teach kids. I teach up people from every walk of life. And I just thought one, and most of them are one on one. They come over to my house. People become friends, you know. I mean, you like the bartender, you know. You know, you, it's, you become really good friends with people. Um, and and that's why, and you always meet people from a different place on earth than yourself. And it really teaches you about other people. So I get doctors, lawyers, cops, doctors, you know. Red so Knights. people from all walks of life. Every walk. Are touched by the blues and come to you. Every single, every, there's nobody, housewives, want to learn how to play happy birthday for their husband. I get everybody. And how do we get in touch with you for lessons? Because I want to sign up. Uh, HoustonHarmonicaLessons.com. That's pretty easy. Or SunnyBoyTerry.com. You can also find me at Facebook.com slash SunnyBoyTerry, whatever. Fantastic. You can find me there. I'm real easy to find. Just Google my name, and I, you know, I'm very easy to find. You know, because I, I have to get out there and do this and survive. You know. So I'm gonna be answering the phone. It's been a great honor to speak Thank to you, you sir. Appreciate Take a it. shot of here with All a little right. harp. Another man and gone, another man and gone to the county farm. I didn't know his name. I didn't know his name. I didn't know his name. Didn't know his name. Another man and gone, another man and gone to the county farm. 